Hey, it's Amy from Dutch Touch Interiors joining you again today. Today I wanted to talk with you about LED light bulbs. So I'm going to give you some good to know tips on them, where to buy them, how you can use them, and I'm going to show you some examples as well. We have them through our house and I can explain to you the best ones to buy so that you'll love your home and still be energy efficient. So first, what's good to know about LED light bulbs that you may know already and some that you may not know? Uh, the obvious one, of course, is that LEDs are very good for your energy bill. So replacing your regular light bulbs in your home with LEDs will drop your energy costs quite a bit. Now, in Calgary in the summertime, we don't tend to have our light bulbs on as much unless it's a gloomy day like it is outside today. Um, so you won't see the energy savings as much in the summer as you will in the winter. Something else that's good to know about LEDs is that there are a variety of types. So I have with me here today, uh, this is what we call an A19 lamp. Uh, so this is just your standard regular light bulb. We actually use these in our kitchen. I stole this one out of our pendant. Don't tell my boyfriend. And uh, so these guys are, are the replacement for your regular light bulb. Now there's a variety of different shapes. I'm going to show you some of them as well here. Um, but they, they're going to fit into your standard fixture. There's also chandelier type bulbs and there's, you can't see it, but there's a chandelier above my desk and I do have LED lamps in that. Uh, there's GU10s, which if you've got track lighting in your kitchen, uh, th those will be, if you're gonna replace bulbs with an LED in one place in your home, replace them in your GU10s because I'm sure that you notice that those bulbs go out all the time. The biggest thing to know when it comes to LEDs actually is what we call color temperature. So. All light is a range of color from the very warm light, which we see is quite yellow, to the very, very cool white, which is what we consider a daylight or what the sun potentially puts out. In that range, um, typically an incandescent light bulb falls at what we call 2700 Kelvin, and that's just the color temperature rating. Uh, daylight is in and around anywhere from five to 7,000 Kelvin, depending on what source you're looking at, what you're reading. Uh, I use an average of about 6,500. What I find uh, most homeowners are doing, and this is where education is huge, a lot of people buy either what they call a soft white, which is that 2,700, or they buy what's called daylight. But these are the homes when you drive by that looks awful inside. It has that awful blue light. It just doesn't make you feel good. Everything looks weird. Um, like if you have them in your home and you're reading, you might find that it's difficult to read. All of that is actually just related to the color temperature of the bulb. It has nothing to do with the light source itself. The last thing that's really good to know, and this is something that I discovered actually on site from a client of mine, was you cannot mix LEDs and CFLs on the same circuit. What I mean is, uh, in this home we had a chandelier that we put above the stairs and we put LED chandelier bulbs in that, in that fixture so she didn't have to replace the bulbs regularly. In the hallway upstairs she had two more flush mount fixtures that I didn't know they had CFL bulbs in them. So we put this beautiful new fixture in, put a dimmer switch in that, was to, that we knew was LED compatible and when she would dim the lights they would flicker quite a bit and they would only dim maybe 30 or 40 percent. So after a few months, I don't know where I suddenly got the idea, but I asked her, I said, the other fixtures, they're on the same circuit. She said, yeah. I said, what fix or what lamps do you have in there? And she said, well, I have CFLs. I said, try putting in a good dimmable uh, LED bulb and see if that fixes the problem. Now she did get a good one. Originally she tried a less costly one and it didn't solve the problem. Um, so I recommend Philips and we'll talk about that later as well. But when she did go to a better light bulb and put that in those two fixtures, everything worked perfectly. And now everything dimmed together and the flickering that we were getting from the chandelier stopped happening. So these are things that are really good to know when you're, when you're looking into LEDs, if you haven't already started putting them in, there, in your home or if you have and you're finding you don't like the light, that's something to be aware of. Okay, so now we know a few things that are good to know about LED light bulbs. I want to talk about where to buy them. Uh, you can certainly find LEDs virtually anywhere. They're at your Walmarts, they're at your Ronas, they're at Home Depot, they're at your high-end lighting stores, they're, I'm sure they're in your grocery aisle. You can find them all over. 
I always go to Home Depot and the reason I go to Home Depot above all the rest is that I found they have the biggest selection and the best price for the selection they have. Now, um, when it comes to LEDs, I always recommend go with Philips. What I found in using them is that Philips are, they're reliable, um, their color temperature is the same. When it comes to LEDs, because it's a different technology, it's not burning a filament like an incandescent, that color temperature is really key. And a good company makes sure that if they've labeled them at 3000 Kelvin, all of them are going to look the same. I've seen lower cost alternatives in the past where one of them is more yellow, one of them is more blue, and then you have this big range all the way throughout. So I always recommend Philips. They do a great job of, of manufacturing good quality light bulbs and their price point is really competitive. Uh, if I'm going to get specialty bulbs, so there's a huge variety again when it comes to LEDs. Um, there are some, we're seeing more and more of the Edison lamps or the Heritage lamps that are on the market. Lots of people really like that look. It has that really beautiful filament. You can actually get those in an LED as well. Go to a, a better lighting store. My preferred supplier here in Calgary is actually Robinson Lighting and uh, they have a great selection and if they don't have it in stock, they can order it in. So I always go there if I can order, if I need to order specialty bulbs. So I spoke earlier about the color temperature of LEDs and how I prefer what I call, or I should say what industry experts call bright white or 3000 Kelvin. So you'll see on the package, it'll say bright white on the package and it'll often be back ended in a white or a yellow, um, but bright white is the color that you want for your home. Now the bright white is, uh, so it's similar to the color that you see on me now, uh, it's warm but it's still bright. So it's not that yellow, that really yellow um, incandescent -y color. Um, and it's not that blue white that you see from the, from the daylight bulbs. So bright white you can use everywhere. It's great for bathrooms, kitchens, uh, dining rooms, offices, uh, bedrooms, really anywhere that you have light bulbs, replace them with a bright white. The only exception to that I would say if you have a space that you specifically want a warmer color temperature of light. So let's say for example you have a beautiful chandelier in your dining room and it's more of an antique chandelier, go with a warmer white or what they call a soft white. Uh, it's a 2700 Kelvin. It's more, uh, it has more of that yellow temperature so it's a bit of a warmer bulb. Uh, those are the only places that you want to use that. The reason for that is it doesn't render things as much in their true color. So LEDs are good for enclosed fixtures. Unfortunately, something that didn't get talked about a lot when CFLs came on the market, and by CFLs I mean those curly light bulbs, is that they actually aren't good for enclosed fixtures. The unfortunate thing is, because we were told they're energy efficient and we were told to replace them everywhere, lots of people have replaced them in fixtures that are actually fully closed off. So uh, ceiling fixtures where the glass clamps right to the ceiling, uh, or if it has like a, a globe glass that turns in place, basically if there isn't room for air to move around it, that's not a good place for a CFL. Incandescents are fine because they're basically just burning a filament and LEDs are actually okay for in there. Now they, there is a bit of a transformer at the bottom of LED, that's what this part is on your LED. But it doesn't get so warm that you can't put them in those enclosed fixtures. So rather than putting in a CFL, put an LED light bulb in there. The other place that's really good for using LEDs, again this is sort of, call it LEDs over CFLs, is places where you're constantly turning lights on and off. So in our laundry room, and I'm sure your laundry room is similar, we turn on the light when we walk in, we do what we need to do, we turn off the light when we leave. If you're putting in CFLs, every time you turn it on, it's a cold start on that lamp and it's hard on the lamp itself. So again, incandescents didn't have that issue because you're just burning a filament. Um, LEDs also don't have the issue of having to be started and stopped. They're totally fine. You can turn them on and off as many times as you want and they're okay. So if you're going to be replacing fixtures, or sorry, replacing light bulbs in fixtures like your laundry room or a mud room, um, replace them with an LED. If you have CFLs in your home right now and you don't want to just throw them out because they still work, put them in fixtures that are on and they stay on for a while. And what I mean by a while, so if you're in your kitchen, you turn the lights on, you're doing work for an hour, and then you turn the light off, great. If you're in there and you turn it on for five minutes and then you're gone, don't put them in those fixtures because you'll actually lower the life of your light bulb. 
Okay, so we've talked about things that are good to know about LEDs, we've talked about where you can buy them, and we've talked about how you can use them in your home. Now I want to show you a few examples so that it makes a little bit more sense to you from actually seeing spaces that are lit differently, how that, uh, that color temperature difference will make a huge difference in how your home looks. So this image that I'm showing you right now, on the left is what they're calling, and they have a tag here on the image, warm white, and on the right is, is what they call cool white. And this is a great um, example of what I'm talking about. Now the image on the left, under warm white, is what I would call a bright white. So it has a really lovely, um, it has warmth to it, but it has a really lovely brightness to it, so you can still see. Now, at this point, they have all the lights on in that room. It might seem like quite bright for you. Uh, most of those rooms will have dimmers on them, and I do suggest having a dimmer on all of the fixtures that you have in your home. On the right side of the picture here is what they call a cool white, and you can see how different it is in terms of just the way it renders the color even in the room. So when you go into a cool white, it has that, a, it looks, in a picture it looks like there's just a skylight above and you have light coming down but really when you're actually in a home it's very cold it makes people look very pallow and very um, almost sickly uh, it doesn't bring any warmth out it makes almost all colors fall flat so especially your warm colors your red orange yellow pink uh, purples things like that will really fall flat in, in light like this your cooler colors may pick up a little bit but they don't have the same depth and body that uh, they will under the bright white. I love examples like this because it really gives you an idea of how that color changes. Same fixture, same setup, same everything. Uh, it's just the color temperature of the light bulb. The last thing that I'm going to show you today is just examples from projects that I've done and uh, one of them is actually including our home. So the first one that I'm going to show you is actually in our kitchen. We put uh, we put three pendants over our island in our kitchen and we put in the LED light bulb. So the one that I held up for you before, uh, this little A19 here, this is actually I just pulled it out of the pendant in our kitchen. So this is exactly what it looks like in there and now you can see the image of what it looks like when those lights are on. It's really nice bright white. We do have them on a dimmer. I highly recommend putting all of your light bulbs on a dimmer. Um, I, just one quick note on that. If you're going to put LEDs on a dimmer, make sure they are a dimmable LED and make sure that your dimmer switch is LED compatible. They are not all the same. It might cost you a few dollars more, but it's worth the investment. So just make sure you check that before you start putting those in. The other example I'm going to show you here is actually the chandelier in my office. So some of you may know that I do have a chandelier that hangs above my desk and it's a bit of a rescue project and it worked out really beautifully. Um, at this particular moment, uh, I only have two LED light bulbs in there and I have one one working incandescent and one not working incandescent. Uh, once the other one goes, I'll actually replace both of them. Um, one thing that I did notice when I replaced the first two chandelier light bulbs, I went to a, um, a higher wattage comparison. The fixture will take up to 60 watts. So I put in a 40 watt equivalent and when I turned it on, it was too bright. And I, I thought maybe at first it was the color, what was going on. And I left it for about a week and found myself continually with a headache until I realized it was far brighter than, than what I had before. So I switched down to a 25 watt equivalent, put them in, loved it. So now it's fantastic. It gives me great light to be able to work all day and it has a really nice effect. So the other project that I'm going to show you here is one that I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, I put in that small crystal chandelier above the stairwell in my client's house. Uh, about two years ago now I guess and we did put LED light bulbs in that fixture and again the reason for that is it's a hard to reach fixture and you want to have lamps in there that are going to last as long as possible. So there you have it, there's a bit of education on LED light bulbs and uh, like I said things that you may not have known before where I strongly suggest that you buy them and the few examples of projects that I've done in the past, including our own home. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please share it, whether it's on your social media pages, through Facebook or Pinterest, uh, on Twitter if you're on Twitter, uh, please share it out. I would really appreciate it. And by all means, come on over to my social media pages and say hit like or share or what have you. Uh, on Facebook, we're at facebook.com forward slash Dutch Touch Interiors. On Pinterest, we're at pinterest.com forward slash Dutch Touch INT. 
And by all means, pop on over to our website, uh, www.dutchtouchinteriors.com. And you can actually follow me on Instagram as well. Can't remember the URL off the very top of my head, but I'll post it at the bottom of the video as well. So follow us on the social pages. If you like this video, please share the video. And if you have any questions or you want to connect with me to learn about how you can do things in your home to create a home that you love coming home to, please connect with me through the website. I look forward to chatting with you soon, and I hope you have an awesome day.